Okay, for part two, I'll be going over some more of the technical features for the Yeelink T48G. I'll be touching on some of the action URLs, uh, ways you can integrate it with some more of the corporate environment tools, and a little bit more of the web interface side and show you some of the things that that can do. So here we are at the computer, and we have our phone right here, and we will be looking at the web management interface here. Uh, this is just the local IP of the machine. Um, I'm using FreePBX for the registration. And uh, default is admin, admin. So once we log in, you are greeted with a page that is going to show you all your tabs and your initial status. WAN port, DHCPs, MAC address, and your account statuses. I'm only registering three out of the six in this case, so it's only showing the three registered, the rest are disabled. So if we go across some tabs here, let's look at the account. Uh, you can go through and edit your settings. Um, pretty detailed. You got your options, transport layer, natting, um, all the normal fun stuff you'll have inside that. Uh, you have your basic, uh, basic proxy information. Uh, really get into a lot of the codecs, which per account. So if you have an account that is, say, through a different um, different provider that you need to do G729 on or something like that. Uh, it really lets you narrow that down. Um, one of the things I really like is on the network side. Uh, I guess the network isn't loading if you don't have something hooked up on the other side. If you look at your, your DSS keys, as I mentioned earlier, the DSS keys here are your pre-configured keys that are here. These are going to give you options such as speed dial 101, which we configured earlier, uh, 97, which is a simple PBX voicemail, um, speed dial 0 for the directory, which is just an extension on the PBX. Um, and you saw earlier I set up a echo test for star 43 um, and that's under 21 through 29 which is hidden you can also get into programming the key functions um, the history key the directory key you can change all of these uh, up down left right is the buttons on the the actual physical hard buttons right here as we mentioned left and right changes your extension and your extension key here. If you had an expansion module, you'd have you know, another 10, 15 keys if you wanted to expand that. A lot of your features here are going to be ones that can be configured on the phone as well, um, such as you, a lot of your forwarding stuff, uh, general information about the device and how you want to handle specific functionalities. Um, and you saw, as I mentioned earlier, um, action URLs. In this case, action URLs are going to be registering uh, events through an HTTP GET to URLs with variables on the end of them. And you can map out different ones for different functionalities. Uh, and I'll get into that in a, in a second. Uh, here on the settings side, um, you're going to get options, time and date, upgrade, auto provisioning, if you want to pr uh, provision management interface there. Uh, backlight active level um, you can change the you know it to go low instead of turning off um, which is one of the good things about it being uh, not a capacitive touch screen because if it turned the screen off you wouldn't be able to wake it up by touching the screen um, you can really change your a lot of information here upload your own wallpapers as well um, so here if I wanted to click and upload this uh, you can see it just changes the wallpaper right there. A lot of information on the time and date, a lot of upgrading here, uh, provision maintenance, uh, and a lot of the changing the soft key layouts, which is great. Everything on this phone is completely configurable. Um, here are your directories. If you look here, uh, we added the directory earlier to just number four. Uh, a lot of this can be configured through. XML or CSV files. You also have remote 
phone books you can add in, uh, which is just a simple XML. Um, phone call information, this gives you full stats on calls that you would be placing from that phone. Uh, forward to the list, you know, calls received. It also does LDAP authentication and you can do directory pulls from different uh, provisioning systems. And our last tab at the top right is security. Um, you can obviously change your password and create different users inside this um, certificate trust. Um, you might think of you know the recent Heartblade attacks here with being able to only accept specific certificates. Uh, you, know, you can really lock down your device, especially uh, certificate files you can upload and change on the fly. Uh, also your server certificates here. So uh, really configurable, a lot of options here. Uh, if we go back into the, something I was looking at for the action URLs. Uh, notice you have a lot of options here. Registration, on hook, off hook, incoming call, outgoing call. If we look at how this is going to be registered, uh, here's a simple Splunk instance here. I'm just looking at live transactions. So if I simply come over here and put my phone in Do Not Disturb, and I come back and I look, we will see an event that will come through. Event Do Not Disturb on. Phone IP model time. And this really lets you do things like chart out actions um, on your corporate environment and that's just a simple example of how things are configured but as far as uh, this phone is con concerned I would say this is a very good overall um, enterprise level to actually entry level phone. It has a lot of features so there are other uh, Yealink devices that might be better if you're not going to be using a lot of those features However, I would say that um, if you can afford it, this is a phone that will last you a long time. It is built from a really good you know, quality perspective, and the feature set really lends it to being something that um, won't be outgrown anytime soon. And that's my opinion on the Yealink T48G.